Hey everybody, it's Lon Seib and it is time for a retro video. We're gonna be wrenching on my Apple IIe here today. If this one looks weird to you Apple aficionados, this is a IIe with the number pad, the latest edition of it. But I swapped out the lid with the lid from my childhood IIe. And one of these days I'll get that old IIe working again to accompany this one here. And as many of you know, I am a real sucker for any time somebody comes up with new hardware for old devices. I love flash cartridges on my game consoles and on the Apple II. I've got a whole bunch of adapter cards that I've bought over the years to enhance these things with modern technology. And that is what we're going to look at today. This is the A2 FPGA. And this is, as its name implies, an FPGA that you can install inside of your Apple II which adds a number of features to the computer without having to add a number of adapter cards. So right out of the gate, the real value proposition here is that you get an HDMI output for both video and audio, provided you are plugging this into an Apple II, 2 Plus, or 2E. It will also work with the Apple IIGS that I have back here, but at the time I'm recording this video, the 2GS functionality doesn't work with audio. So we're gonna come back to the 2GS with this board in the future because I have some other work to do on it, including replacing the power supply. So today we're gonna to pop it in this 2E right here. Also of note is that because it has an FPGA on board, over time they will add additional functionality to the card. And right now, in addition to working as a video and audio output, which is great on its own, it also has the logic of an old Mockingboard card, which was an audio enhancement, a sound card, for the original Apple IIs. And there's a couple of games that I've had since childhood, including one that came from my cousin's house here that looks like it was a little bit of a piracy deal here. Um, these two games actually have soundtracks that I've never heard before on these discs, specifically for that Mockingboard device. So we should be able to get some nice 480p video out of the HDMI and hear some audio in these games that I've never heard before, even after 30 plus years. So this is gonna be a fun one. I know these don't get viewed as much as my other stuff does, but this is the kind of thing that I like to do when I've got a few extra minutes. So what we're gonna do in this video is install this in here and see how it all works. And I do wanna let you know in the interest of full disclosure that I paid for this with my own funds. I bought it from a website called Reactive Micro. I'll put a link to them in the video description. Uh, they provide a lot of great hardware for the Apple IIs. They've rebuilt or re reimagined, if you will, some of the classic expansion cards and accelerators that were available at the time. You can also get new power supplies like my 2GS back there needs. So cool stuff there. They're not paying me to do this review or anything, but it's a, a really good resource, I think, for Apple II owners to get some of their old computers working again. So they, uh, again, are not paying for this review. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own and no one has reviewed or approved this video before it got uploaded. So let's get into it now and install this card and see what it does. Now I did want to note that there is a USB Type-C port here on the back of the card. This is what you use for updating its firmware. So you take the card out, plug it into a PC to update it. This ships with the most recent firmware on it, so I'm not going to need to do that today, but when we go and get my 2GS back there working, we will certainly have to do that, so that will be covered in the follow-up video if there's enough interest in this one. One other note is that some builds of the firmware allow you to use this USB port as a serial port for connecting to other Apple computers to transfer disk images and data, so that's pretty neat. Uh, so there's a lot of things that can get built into this card because of that FPGA. One other feature of the card that we're not going to cover today is that they do have support for what I think is a rather obscure Super Sprite graphics card. I did look at some YouTube videos of what that card was about. It looks pretty cool, I guess, for the time, but there's no real game support for it, so it's not going to be something that would be all that interesting to demo. So we're going to focus on HDMI and the Mockingboard support. All right, so let's pop the hood here. I think I have to actually move a card around and I'll explain why in a second. Now, inside of this 2E, I currently have a serial card in slot two, and this is an Apple Super Serial card. And the reason why I have that card in here is that I was originally running a bulletin board system off of this for a short time via Telnet. I've got a video way back in the archive about that. Uh, slots uh, three, four, and five are clear. Slot six is where I have my uh, disk drive card for my five and a quarter inch disk drive that we're going to be using to load these games up in a minute. And then in slot seven, I've got a really neat card. This is 
called the CFFA 3000. And this is a hard drive simulator that works with either a compact flash card or a USB uh, stick that you can plug into it as well. And it's a great way to get modern storage onto your computer. This particular one I bought a long time ago, but Reactive Micro is currently making these again. I'm actually going to move this out of slot 7 for two reasons. One is that uh, they do suggest that you use slot 7 for the FPGA card just so that you can route the HDMI cable e more easily. So that's one reason. The other is that I am uh, installing this with the default firmware that has that graphics accelerator installed on it. And that requires slot 7 to be free because although we're only using one slot physically, the way the Apple II addresses the cards in it is by the slot number. And because we've got the mocking board, the graphics accelerator, uh, and a few other things going on here, we have to leave slot 7 open for the graphics and slot 4 open for the mocking board support. So I can't put things into those slots, although I can, of course, put uh, this card into slot 7 to get it to work. So we're going to install that here. And there's no driver to install because it just works apparently when you boot things up. And I'm going to relocate the CFFA 3000 to slot 5. And that's normally the slot that you would put your 3.5 inch drive in. Now, one thing, I'm just going to pull it out here for a second because I forgot to mention that there are some dip switches on here. Now, there's one switch that I'm going to turn off from the default, which is the first one here. So by default, it will have scan lines on the HDMI output. So I'm going to turn that off initially. Maybe we'll switch it back on afterward to see how it works. Switch 2 is what you use for enabling the Apple II speaker sounds to go over the HDMI. So we're going to leave that on, which is the default. Switch 3 is for uh, the computer to wait until the FPGA initializes before it boots. That default is on, so we'll leave it there. And then if you're using an Apple II GS, you switch switch 4 to on. But because we are in a 2E here, we're going to leave that off. So I'm going to just install it in here. And the next thing we're going to do is get my HDMI cable routed inside. And then we will boot it up and see if it works. So let's get the case back on and see what happens. All right, we're going to start off here with Skyfox. And I did have some issues with my capture hardware here, which is something that the developers of this board said you might have. Um, so I'm using a lot of this NDI capture hardware. These are external boxes that grab video and put it out over my network. They just didn't like the output coming out of this thing. So I ran it directly into my Blackmagic card that is plugged into my vMix computer here. And there were some audio syncing issues and that the audio was breaking up. So what I ended up going to is my tried and true Camlink 4K USB capture stick that I reviewed about two years ago. And I have it plugged into this laptop here, which is outputting over to vMix. And now that's working just fine. So why don't we turn on the switch here and see what happens. Uh, what you'll see is a bit of a delay before it boots up, but there's our HDMI video. And look at that. We've got Skyfox here loading, and it is super, super crisp. You don't usually see this coming out of an old Apple II, and that's thanks to the uh, HDMI output we have there. And that audio sounds spectacular. This song has been locked away on this floppy disk for 40 years, maybe. It's been on here the whole time since I bought it, but I never heard it before because I never had a mocking board. So that's pretty cool. Let's take a look at one other game, and then we'll see some other things. Now, this next one has a very surprising soundtrack. This is the Halley Project, which came out in like 1985-86, and it has this digitized opener that's pretty wild. And it's amazing that the Apple II can make this sound without any special hardware. So let's see how this board handles this, because they did a lot of hardware hacks to make this work. It does take a second for the audio to kick in, but it's very surprising when you hear it, especially given the very limited hardware it's running on. Uh, so just give it a second here to run through the opener, and then we'll uh, see how this all sounds. I actually heard from the guy that did this audio you're about to hear a couple of years ago. I should try to get him on the show. All right, looks like it's going to start now. I'm going to mute myself and have a listen. Maybe. Roger, this is Delta One Niner. We have you on radar. We are go on hyperspace. 
So it actually sounds how I remembered it sounding, and that's pretty cool, uh, given that it's going through this board and not the speaker. Speaking of speakers, in order to get the speaker not to make any noise on the Apple, I had to unplug it physically. There's no way to bypass audio coming out of that unless you detach it completely. But it's very easy to get in there and just pull the cable off the motherboard, which is what I did. Otherwise, it would have been playing out of both here and the HDMI output. But it does seem to be working pretty cool here. What's also neat is that uh, my friends who used to come over to play this with me are all on here. <laughs> so my buddy Steve Capsonow, who I still see all the time, is on here, and a number of other folks here as well. So that's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, this disc is one of my originals, and uh, maybe I'll play this again with Steve in the next couple of days. All right, I did want to show you my cousin's disc here. This I got back in like 1985 or so. I'm surprised all these discs are still working as good as they are. I did image them a number of years ago, so I have them all uh, preserved here. I thought the game on here called One on One, which was a basketball game, uh, did support the Mockingboard. Whatever copy this one has doesn't support that. Uh, this was a, a pirated game, so it probably uh, had some things stripped out of it, or maybe it's an older version of it. Um, but I did want to jump into basic here real quick because I wanted to test out the 80 column mode. So by default, the Apple II, 2 Plus, and 2E work with 40 columns of text on the screen, but the 2E added 80 columns of text if you had an expansion board plugged into it, which this one has, and that brought the RAM up to 128K of RAM. That's what this one has on board. So if you hit the command PR number three with a upgraded 2E, you will get 80 column mode here. There we go. So it looks like that is working, and I could just do a quick test and see how the text looks on here. And do a little basic programming if I can remember how to do it. The keyboard's a little sticky, um, but there you go. It seems to perform exactly the same as it does when it's plugged in via composite. So that mission was accomplished. The Mockingboard audio sounds great. I'll have to find some more games and do a follow-up video and boot them off of that uh, CFFA board. And I'm eager to see what comes of this card in the future, especially related to my 2GS back there. So in an upcoming video, what we're gonna do once that firmware gets updated, is throw the card in the 2GS, play some of the more enhanced games that it supports, and see how the audio works with the much, much better uh, audio hardware in that 2GS. It has an Ensonic uh, chip on board, so that should be a pretty fun uh, little project. And that uh, 2GS has got a lot of hardware inside of it back there, so uh, we will have to uh, move some cards around to get all of this to work. So that'll be coming up once they do the firmware update. But I just wanted to show you this. And of course, you can get an emulator and do all this for, uh, for free, essentially. But it's something, really something cool about being able to run things on the original hardware. My kids are starting to appreciate these things, and it's fun to have them experience them the same way I did. And this is a nice way to uh, bring on some better displays into the mix and have a little bit of a better experience still using the original hardware. So we'll come back to this in the near future. Let me know what you thought down in the comments below. And until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Brian Parker, Budley, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Steve Green, and Amda Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.